This video is going to go through the process of composing a fourth species counterpoint below the cantus firmus. So like the other video on composing above, this is going to depend on some knowledge of the rules of fourth species counterpoint before you can get much out of this video. So I'd recommend you brush up on those first before watching this. So let's look at this A mode or Aeolian cantus firmus first. It goes something like, So it's full of nice descending motion, which we like to see in a fourth species counterpoint. And I'll just throw a little card up here to remind you that in fourth species below, we're looking not for four, three, or seven, six suspensions, but we're limited to either two, three, or nine, 10. These are the two suspensions we can use in fourth species below um, because our suspension needs to resolve down to an imperfect consonance. So these are actually the same interval, just separated by an octave. So we're gonna be looking for situations where we can write two, three, two, three, two, three, or nine, 10, nine, 10 as our chain of suspensions. So our options are more constrained in fourth species counterpoint and writing fourth species below is a little bit more difficult than fourth species above. And the difference between below and above is a little bit more pronounced than it is in first or second species, for example. So when we're writing below, we're limited to only writing an octave at the beginning. We can't write a fifth because that would confuse the sound of the mode. Here we begin with a leap, so we are able to begin with an octave, hold that over to begin with octave leaping up to fifth. Uh, this is kind of lucky. If you have a cantus firmus that begins with a descending leap, um, you're forced to break the species right there at the outset uh, in order to follow the rules. So a cantus firmus that leaps at the beginning is usually uh, a lot easier to write for in fourth species below. Next, we want to follow this and we want to leap to a third or a tenth that's then going to collapse into a dissonant suspension, nine, expand to 10, collapse to nine, expand to 10, and so forth, once we see this descending motion. So we're, we're first starting with the octave, luckily we can hold it over, and then we're noticing there's descending motion here from E, D, C, B. We're going to be able to follow this along for a little while. So I'm going to leap up to pick up this 10th. Then I'll hold it over. That interval will collapse to a ninth, and I can move downwards. Then we keep that going, nine to 10, and let's just follow it as far as we can, nine to 10. Good, so what we have so far sounds something like this. So we look at this leap and we see that leaping uh, back up to D here would leave us with a fifth if we hold this over. Naturally G being held over is what we prefer to do um, since we don't want to break the species if we don't have to, which means that we can hold this as a fifth. And we can do exactly the same thing uh, that we just did where we leap from the fifth up to the tenth. In this case, it's G up to B. And we set ourselves up perfectly for 10, nine, 10, hold 
write this over, resolve this way, being careful to raise our leading tone so that we end with uh, a half step there. Nine, ten, this tenth collapses to an octave. So what we see is something like this.